Good afternoon. Today I'm going to talk about the potential of genocide education in the high school setting and provide examples from my own experience in teaching the Holocaust and the graphic novel Mouse. When I was 16, I had a history teacher who regularly offered lecture series open to all students and staff during lunchtime. One afternoon, he advertised the title of his next lecture, which was called The Armenian Massacres of 1915. After class, I went to see him and I asked him why he hadn't called the lecture The Armenian Genocide of 1915. And he said that what had occurred to the Armenians in 1915 was not a genocide. At most, it could be called ethnic cleansing. I disagreed, and he asked me why. I said, I'm half Armenian, therefore I have been to Armenian schools, and we have always been taught that it was a genocide. And he repeated his question and said, why? Tell me more, tell me the facts beyond what you were taught and beyond what you were indoctrinated. I realized that I couldn't give him an answer because I didn't have all the facts. I mean, I had a vague idea. I knew something horrible ha had happened to Armenians in 1915. I knew many had died. I knew that was the reason why my mother's family had ended up in Palestine and Lebanon. But I could not differentiate between ethnic cleansing and genocide. Years later, I had become an educator myself. And if that exchange taught me anything, is that genocide education has to come from the foundation of a strong pedagogy, which requires concepts to be broken down and students be adequately prepared to challenge those who distort history. The plan for today, I'm going to go over the benefits of genocide education in the classroom. I'm going to elaborate on two components that make up the pedagogy behind it. And I will provide examples from my grade 11 project, uh, which was a unit on the Holocaust and the graphic novel Mouse. Genocide education provides an incredible opportunity to teach students about responsible citizenship. It raises issues about human rights violations and abuses of power. It tackles issues of morality, ethics, of what is defined as right or wrong in the areas in between. It touches on themes of identity and membership. It expands the understanding of stereotyping and scapegoating. It shows students the extreme consequences of racism and bullying. And it also teaches students that democratic institutions are fragile and that they constantly should be developed and reinforced. More importantly, greater awareness about genocide has the potential to create measures for prevention. So by understanding the forces and the mechanisms behind it, the signs and the patterns will become more apparent, which in turn might prompt an individual or group to take action. It also shows the bystander effect and the dangers of an unthinking group and group pressure. The triangle of responsibility generated very lively discussion amongst my students about what constitutes personal responsibility when faced with oppression and injustice. Most students were shocked by the statistics that during the Holocaust, less than 1% of the population were rescuers. Background building, as we refer to it in teaching, is the basis of genocide education. It is imperative to present context in a comprehensive manner. Time is always the enemy when taking on such a large and nuanced topic, so it's important for teachers to first assess what the students know and then to build from there. Offering proper context includes defining genocide, going over the history of the events in question, the stages towards genocide, and reviewing international response, as well as the role of the rescuers. The most important contribution of proper, of proper background is that it shows students that genocides do not occur in a vacuum, that they are planned, that they are intentional, and that they are organized. The absence of context can lead to overgeneralizations and misconceptions about historical events and places a responsibility on fanatics instead of the well-oiled machine behind the scenes and the <coughs> inaction of the bystanders. For example, at the start of my unit, my students had very little exposure to the Holocaust and to the Second World War, uh, and overwhelmingly held the view that the Holocaust occurred because Hitler came to power and he was a psychopath and he hated Jews. They were, they were very surprised to learn about centuries of anti-Semitism in Europe that led up to that point. 
The other element that enriches genocide education is the use of personal histories. Personal accounts legitimize and humanize the events that are being studied, making it more relatable to students. Since the horrors of genocide are beyond comprehension, personalizing it helps students come to grips with the numbers. It puts a face to history and it brings the numbers to life. Narratives touch us on an emotional level. They don't just stop at the teller's experience, but they're also assimilated and become part of our experience and our shared knowledge. More importantly, stories can motivate moral action because the authentic experience forces us to empathize and to question what would we do in that situation. The setting for my unit, uh, it took place in, um, at the end of the academic year in May and June of 2012. That year I had 209 students, but the uh, unit was targeted for my grade 11 students. I had 144 of them. Uh, four groups of 36 students. They were mostly 16 years old. The school was the Collège du Rocher Saint Lambert, a French Canadian uh, French speaking school in suburban Montreal in Quebec, Canada. And my subject was English uh, as a second language, but most of my students were bilingual. My objective was simple expose students to genocide. My secret hope was that it would promote awareness on future action from their part. In 2011, after a visit to Dachau concentration camp, I bought the graphic novel Mouse from the bookshop there. And after reading it, I knew I had to teach it. Mouse is a fascinating teaching tool. It's written and illustrated by Art Spiegelman, and it's the only graphic novel to ever have won the Pulitzer Prize. It consists of two volumes, and in my class, we read both of them. It's a frame narrative, a term that uh, Lisa mentioned yesterday. Uh, and it's about the author's experiences with his parents who both survived Auschwitz. And what's interesting about the book is that it doesn't just relate about his parents' time in the concentration camps, but it also talks about the aftermath. And it asks, asks the question, do even the survivors survive a genocide? What lifelong scars are they left with? And how are those scars then transmitted onto their children? and then their children's children. The response from my students was very positive. They generally loved the novel. Um, it tackles and deals with themes that are universal to high school students, uh, such as a difficult relationship with parents, bullying, suicide, resiliency, uh, depression, love, guilt, and survival. The first part of the unit consisted on the study of the historical backdrop to the Holocaust which lasted three weeks, three and a half weeks, and was nowhere near enough time. Unfortunately, it's all I had. The second part was to read and analyze Mouse, which was the English language component of the lesson. And the last part consisted of a team project, where students had to research other genocides, find personal accounts from survivors, and using Mouse as a, no as a model, illustrate a comic based on that survivor's account. The completed projects were strong, some of the best that I had seen that year. Most interesting is that some students explored their own family histories uh, by interviewing a parent or a grandparent. One student wrote about his great grandmother's experiences in the Second World War when she was discovered as part of the underground resistance in France and was first sent to a prison boat, then to Ravensbrück concentration camp, then later to work in salt mines. She was 59 when she moved back to France, reclaimed her family restaurant that she had been running before, and in 1962, she was honored by President Charles de Gaulle for her efforts during the war. One half Cambodian student created a comic book about her mother's experiences during the Cambodian genocide, where her mother had lost her father and brother uh, due to starvation. Her mother had always been reluctant to speak about her experiences to her daughter, but decided to open up uh, for the sake of this project. Both students had included actual photographs of their family members from that time, and it was an incredible privilege to read their stories. Another team contacted a Rwandan genocide survivor through a local non-governmental organization in Montreal, and they met and interviewed him and created their work based on his story. The Rwandan genocide was particularly uh, popular amongst my Quebecois students due to a few prominent locals who experienced it firsthand. 
such as the Canadian Senator and Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire, who was a former commander of the United Nations Mission for Rwanda. As well, Francophone singer-songwriter Corneille, who's very popular in Quebec, uh, who at the age of 17 hid behind a sofa while nine members of his family were massacred. Uh, so I had a few projects based on those individuals. And the first day we started the unit on the background of the Holocaust, the very first thing I did was to show students the notorious quote by Hitler of who today speaks of the Armenians. And as a group, we had discussed its implications. And it was then that I realized that out of 144 students in grade 11, not one had heard of the Armenian genocide. So talking about it opened the door for quite a few students to base their projects on it. I will now share some excerpts from those projects. The first one is called A Place to Hide. I chose it because it takes place in Holland. And it's about one of the students' great-grandparents who hid Jews in their attic during World War II. The illustrations are simple, and it reads more like a children's book than a comic book, but it's clean and meticulously done. So on the, first, uh, on the, first si on the right side, you see the Appledorn family. Uh, consisting of the parents and uh, their two daughters. One night, a group of four Jews came asking them for shelter, and they took them in and hid them in their attic for three years. <coughs> At one point, Nazi soldiers came and wanted to requisition the Appledorn home to turn it into a control post, and the father, realizing that their cover would be blown, faked a measles outbreak to deter the appropriation of the house. The constant stress and fear became unbearable for one of the women in hiding, and she eventually took her own life and had to be buried uh, in, in utmost secrecy in the middle of night, in the night. After the war, the Appledorns realized that their neighbors knew all along that they had been hiding Jews, but that they did not report them to the authorities. The next one is called Cockroaches, and it's written by illustra and illustrated by two students. The students first drew the comic by hand, and then they scanned it and printed it in, to bind it into a book. It tells the story of Freddy, a survivor of the Rwandan genocide. He was 18 when, on April 13, 1994, armed men came to his house. He was hiding at the time, but they took his mother, and it was one of her former students who dragged her out and held her down as she was being killed. He later found her, and with a friend, he secretly buried her. And Freddie mentions that he knew his mother's killers well, that they had been friends of the family and neighbors. What I enjoyed about the panel that you see at the bottom, the one with the orange background, is that the students understood the concept of dehumanization, which, which we had seen in the eight stages leading to genocide. And here you see a Tutsi gradually being morphed into a non-human, a cockroach. When Hunger Reigns is illustrated by two students. It's uh, mostly done in orange and black pen, and it's about Holodomor, which was mentioned this morning. It's the man-induced famine in which millions of Ukrainians died. The story tells of J Jacob Neufeld, and the first panel draws the reader in because it starts with, I was already hungry when the locusts came, but they were hungrier. And the imagery is dark and it's distressing. So he's telling the story to a journalist, and it's told in a flashback. And at the bottom of the page, you see uh, his family being depicted. And the two students decided to go into some of the background of the famine. They show Stalin, that I'm sure you've recognized at the top, and they illustrate the consequences of resistance and his policies in the Ukraine. And then the students from that move back to uh, Jacob's family situation and describe their difficult living conditions. Eventually, Jacob ended up all alone when he was eight years old. His father was sent to a gulag, follow followed by his two elder brothers. And his mother and sister were sent to the trenches to help with the war effort. After a while, his father came back, one of his brothers came back, and eventually his mother and his sister. You can see in the images the physical changes that show what they had endured. In 1949, the family moved to Canada. 
And the students told me that Jacob's father never physically recovered from his time in the gulags and died shortly after arriving in Canada. They also bring up the question of recognizing this famine as a genocide in one of the panels. And the comic ends on a positive note about the privilege of living in Canada. Uh, and Jacob Neufeld is still alive. He's 87 uh, this year. I think he turned 87. And he's living in the Ontario region in Niagara. My last project is called The Artist and His Daughter. And I'm sure if you were here yesterday, you'll recognize the title. Uh, and it's based on Ashil Gorky. It's illustrated in pencil by two students. The students who drew this didn't have a significant background in art, but they had a strong interest in art history. While researching the Armenian genocide, they came across Ashil Gorky, and they wanted to address a difficult subject through an artist's experience. They drew his story the way they imagined it happening based on their research. They also tried to draw the characters' faces the way Gorky painted his. The first panel takes us to the Armenian genocide memorial outside of Yerevan, and then to the museum where the artist and his mother is displayed. And the story is narrated by Gorky's daughter, Mara, who is also an artist herself. At the, at the bottom panels, she's talking about her father's elusive past. And then you see him standing in the portrait of the, of the artist and his mother, but the mother is absent in that picture. And then we go to his childhood on the shores of Lake Van. Also depicted is the arrival of Turkish soldiers and the Armenians' deportations and the caravans that were led on the long marches. These panels illustrate Gorky's arrival in Yerevan and uh, the family's difficult living conditions and trying to survive. The students also included an event that had such a large impact on Gorky's life, his mother's death from starvation. This panel depicts the artist's arrival in America, and this is Ellis Island. The comic ends with Gorky's tragic death. Professor Jeffrey Short, who has written extensively on Holocaust education, warns that simply arming students with the knowledge of racism and genocide does not necessarily uh, ensure anti-racist behavior. Instead, students must be challenged to think beyond the events of genocide by carefully examining the group dynamics, peer pressure, the role of the bystander, and the role of the upstander. I'm not sure what the long-term results of my unit were on my 144 students. What I know for sure is that in the midst of it, they were inspired to create beautiful works, and they were genuinely moved by the personal accounts that they had read. At the very least, I hope it sensitized them about the consequences of their action or inaction whenever there's an opportunity to change the course of history. Thank you. Thank you.